Welcome back to Stinker, Drinker, Thinker, everybody. Um, we are three guys with pours and pours. We make some cocktails. We're going to make a bunch of cocktails tonight. Um, and we rank them in our own very special way, a ranking system we've developed known as the Stinker, Drinker, or Thinker. Um, it has traveled all across the globe um, thanks to um, my two co-hosts here. My name is Anthony Longano. I am joined by Troy the Body Vaglotti. Troy, say hello. Okay. Hello. And if anyone wants some context on where that body came from, listen to our last episode. And then I'm joined by, um, once again, the um, magenta-wearing shirt, Salmon Fisher. Uh, I'm a Salmon Fisher? Matt McKibbles. Say hello, Matt. Oh, wow. Oh, right. wow. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, hi. It's really nice to be here. Hello. Yeah. Matt, Matt, Matt's, uh, Matt's, Matt's a good guy. A little air, a little air love for you. There you go. Um. So, just a little recap before we get into it here. We just did the Penelope line on our last episode, and if you're um, listening on Spotify or, or um, Apple Podcasts or, or YouTube, um, we do appreciate that uh, first and foremost. Um, but we did that Penelope episode. What did we get? We got three of the four in the Infinity Drink. Yeah, we, we got three drinkers. Three drinkers out of the four. Um, the shocker was the architect bottle. Um, Matt liked it, which is, you know, which is fine. Me and Troy did not. Um, so it did not make it in. And I actually really wanted it in there, but it, yeah, is, you know. it is what it is. We'll go back to it another time. Um, Troy's, Troy's not ever going to drink it again. I might, but just didn't get it in. I think there's hope. Yeah. I think there's hope because, because we went back to it and revisit at the very end, and it yeah. did change for the better. There's hope. It did change for there's the hope. better. Yeah. You know, I... You know, I don't want to. I don't want to force feed the infinite drinker. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I, I really don't want to force yeah. feed the infinite drinker. And like, and this it, isn't foie gras, people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, that's, and a, if, that's a high class joke. <laughs> yeah. And, and if I and if I did want to force feed the infinite drinker, that one would have went in there because I was really, really, really excited to to try it. Um, I was a little jealous that Matt bought it. If you guys listened to that, you heard me yell at him a bunch. Um, but like, try my best to be honest. Really wish it was in there. It's not. But moving forward, um, we're going to add some cocktails to the Infinity Drinker tonight. Um, that's not true. We're not. Can you imagine adding juice? <laughs> <in there? laughs> we're not. We're not. Is that doing ginger that, syrup in there? Yeah. Um, by the way, that, that Infinity Drinker was gifted to us by our friend Zach over at engraved.com. Um, I, you can follow him on our social media. I tagged him in a post uh, a few days ago. Thank you, Zach. That was an awesome gift. We buy all of our glassware um, from Zach. He does the engraving for us. Thus, the name engraved, um, and all that stuff's available on our shop on Instagram or at our website, sinkerdrinkerthinker.com. We have a bunch of merch available, and we have some sales going on and some giveaways um, with that, where you could win. You can't see it here, but uh, you can win some little baby bottles of some really cool pours. We got Willet Pot Steel Reserve, Willet Three Year Family Estate Rye. We got some some Balconies bottles we're giving away. Um, oh, you yeah, have the Teelings ones up there now. Yeah, I got I, I found some Teeling up there, and Clyde Mays, and we got Clyde Mays. We got some Courage and Conviction. Um, there's going to be, there's tears to that giveaway. So, um, just, you know, check out the Instagram for, for, for what to do to, to get some stuff. But regardless of that, besides me trying to force feed you to go to there, um, we really appreciate the traffic that has been coming in there, especially with how, how new we are. Um, you guys have been buying a ton of stuff, so that's really cool. Um, appreciate that. But if you're into custom glassware, if you want to get a nice gift for somebody, uh, Zach over at engraved, hit him up. Customer service is excellent. We've talked about that on here before. So, um, Moving on. What are we doing today? What are we doing? When the night goes cold, you get home from a long day at your shitty nine to five, and your wife is bitching, or your kids are yelling, and your dog shit on the floor. <laughs> All you want is a drink. And you've made this drink a million times, but it always tastes bad. Always. Who are you going to call? That's right. you going to call. right. I don't have a phone. Help. Help. I don't have a phone. The cocktail doctors, everybody. You call the cocktail doctors. Who are they? Uh, it's me and Troy the Body Vigladi. <laughs> We're here to help, guys. I'm the receptionist. Call me. Yeah. I'll pick up a transcript yeah. from one of the cocktail Matt, doctors. Matt, yeah, Matt handles our messages. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like the lady in the, in the firehouse at Ghostbusters who just answers the phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with the cigarette in her mouth yeah. and the visor. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Ghostbusters <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> That would be great. Um, but, yeah, so um, 
you know, listen, there's a lot, and we've talked about this before, that the, putting the name doctor after anything kind of adds some sort of, like, ego to it. We don't have a fucking degree in cocktails. Me and Troy like to drink. Um, and if anything, we've, you know, it, it's humbling some of the, these submissions we've gotten on here before, and we, and we really enjoy tweaking your drinks, things like that. But if you, and, you know, if you do have a drink that you're struggling with, and if you like fucking around with cocktails, um, we can open your eyes to maybe some new spirits and things like that, or new techniques, or new ways to make syrups or ingredients that you wouldn't normally use. Um, because literally, me, me and Troy uh, spend full days doing this by ourselves. Um, so we just thought it would be a good thing to have on here. Um, we're going to switch up the format. We've done a couple cocktail doctor episodes on here, but I think we, after some some talking and some revision, I think um, I think we're going to finally do it the right way. So. Um, Matt, tell us about the submission, and then I'll tell I'll talk about the format. <clears throat> okay, so this is going to be a long one, so bear with us. Uh, this comes in from uh, Jameson. Don't know who that is. The cocktail is called A Night of Thousand Tears. The ingredients are one ounce lemon juice, one ounce passion fruit syrup, one ounce ginger syrup, two dashes is a pechards, pechards, bitters, and two ounces of gin. How is it prepared? Hark ye foundling, and let me tell you a tale of the night of a thousand tears. A fine mix of fiery spice, tart fruity notes, a subtle sweetness, fresh citrus, and botanicals throw into tin and shaken to chill. Strained and served in a chilled coop, because obviously everything is chilled, chilled, served in a chilled coop, as we know. A quick tilt of the pechards on the surface to finish. Mix everything in the tin and shake with ice. You can absinthe rinse the glass if you want additional flavor, but I tend to leave it out. Double or single strain if you're looking to keep the drink cooler longer or dilute further. Up to, your, up to you. A quick bump of the bitters bottle should represent a smear of blood. Specific. Hmm. Why do you li- why do you like it? I was experimenting one day in my kitchen and wanted to create something new. I've recently become a bit of a cocksmith. Cocktail. Jameson. Smith. Jameson, Look Jameson, that. Jameson. Clever wording. Uh, that's Cocktail Smith, mind out of the gutter, boys. When I have friends over, I'm always behind the bar whipping up cocktails to get them good and tipsy. What a good what a good friend. Typically, my drinks are rum or whiskey-based, so I wanted to make something with gin. I typically hate gin, not to the level that Anthony hates vodka, but, but most <laughs> gin I have out in the wild are a urine-infused nightmare. That was until I had a tiki cocktail called a Saturn. This is a riff on that drink. Removing the, or, I'm going to say it wrong every time, Orjo, Orjot. 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 And Falernum, and subbing in some ginger spice and anise from the bitters. I had one sip and said, holy shit, this is good. Every ingredient hits in its own way, and it's fantastic. Every person I've served, to uh, it raves about it. I'm sorry it doesn't have, like... <laughs> I'm sorry it doesn't have, like, four horrendously bitter Amari in it, so if you don't like it, you can always go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. Thank you, Jameson. Uh, what do you want to about I would love to fuck it? myself. I would love to fuck myself. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. It's great. I just want validation. I'm kidding. Make it your own. I want to know how you guys handle something like this, seeing as though it's way outside your typical drink. Do you have any dietary restrictions or spirits you hate? Fuck Campari. Yeah. Thank you, James. <laughs> Thank you, Jameson. Um, okay. Well, we got one more. Oh, one more. Is there anything you'd like us, uh, anything else you'd like to know about the drink? The lore of the drink for those uneducated in the ways of the far ga- or the galaxy far, far away comes from the home world of the Mandalorians. The visual milky pale beige color of the liquid reminds me of the bombed out world. The drink is in honor of the night the world was destroyed and its people massacred. The splash of Peshoz on top symbolizes the blood split, oh, spilt that night. And if you uh, if you single strain it, the small shards of ice are bones of its people. I'm a Star Wars nerd and D and D. Oh, uh, I'm a Star Wars nerd who D and D this motherfucker. I make no apologies. <laughs> On a serious note, to make this drink properly, you'll need to follow the method of uh, how to drink uh, or educate a barfly to create a properly proper fiery ginger syrup. It should be very hot to taste on its own. This should be nothing more than blended up whole ginger, water, and sugar. The passion fruit you can make yourself, like a two-to-one passion fruit, simple syrup ratio, or uh, you can purchase it from Library and Company. And then, what's your Instagram user? I'm not a Zoomer. All right. Cool. So, Jameson went Whole to our here. website at stinkerdrinkfigure.com and submitted that through there. If you if you want to submit one, um, we would love to, to have you on here. So, here, here's going to be the new format. Um 
we're going to make the original drink. Drink. Uh, Jameson said this is based off a cocktail called the Saturn that he had. Um, we're going to make that. And we're going to make um, his version. And we're going to do them side by side. Um, and then me and Troy are going to give them a proper diagnosis. And Jameson, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you think it's perfect. I, I love that about you. Um, <laughs> but just, you know, what is it called? The Night of a Thousand Tears? Uh, that sounds right. The the long night is coming for you, Jameson, and be weary. The night is dark and full of liquor. <laughs> night of a thousand years, yeah. Yeah. Well, on that Very note, exciting. I'm I, I'm just excited. Yeah. Um, Troy, you're gonna make us a Saturn. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. We'll give it a go. Let's go to a planetary break. Let's go to Saturn. <laughs> All right. Saturn. Saturn break. Welcome back from Cocktail Bar. Cocktail Break brought to me by uh, being a fucking adult. How about that? Let's be a fucking adult and drink some adult beverages, all right? Let's get to it. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we made we made the Saturn. Troy's got it. And Jameson, just for you, we bought it. I used the tiki glass that I used uh, that I get bought at the Galaxy's Edge in Florida. <laughs> get a full on photo of that one. There you go. It's there you go. What is that creature called? I don't know. For real Star Wars fans here. Yeah. I, there's so many fucking creatures a, a in Star Pisha, Wars. Pisha Frowning. <laughs> I just love the frown. Let's drink it. That's a Saturn. That's the original cocktail. Yep. Okay. One and a half gin, half lemon, quarter passion fruit puree, half orgeat, half velvet falernum, which we'll get into. Cool. Okay. We're sharing this. So yeah. I'm going to take a sip. This will give you time to think while we drink. Mm. <laughs> mm. It is balanced, thankfully. Dude, passion fruit is something else. It's definitely present. Yeah. Oh. Whoa. And the bubble from Landrum is also there, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Just when you think it's going to be too tart, though, it doesn't quite get too tart. I agree. Yeah. I feel like it could use a little bit more sugar to, for to be a tiki beverage, but... It, ice will dissolve, too, I'm assuming. Yeah. That kind of brings mm -hmm. it down a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> it is fun. Lemon and and passion fruit, and I I don't I definitely don't think it's over the top with tartness. Surprisingly so. But What are the other ingredients that I don't recognize in there? Okay, well, the Orgeat is uh, uh, a nut-based syrup, um, which I, I made on my lunch break. And we've um, made on this podcast before. Yeah, yeah we did too. it. I did it with walnuts in the past. I did it with almonds today, which is more traditional. Um, a couple of, like a, a half teaspoon of, of orange blossom water. And a spirit, like a, an ounce of a spirit. Brandy is usually called for. I actually used Benedictine because oh. it's the closest thing that I had. And it's base, it's brandy based basically anyway. Or mm. grape based. Um, so I did that. And yeah. And then the Velvet Falernum. Uh, from Barbados, which you know, just like Angostura bitters, which is you know why it's in that in that tiki cocktail vein. It's it's a very much uh, an ingredient that you'll see um, ubiquitously in uh, in tiki cocktails, and it's only eleven percent alcohol. It's kind of like I think it's made from sugar cane, but it's more of a syrup with a little bit of an alcoholic boost. Um, I think it's got some citrus like lime flavor and a little bit of spice and things like that. But it's just a just a sort of uh, use as a sweetener or enhancement. So it's or, really like you're on a hot beach in Barbados and you want sure. something alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this is, I, I mean, it's not something I would drink every day for sure, but uh, if, if I could get another another whack at it. Of course. <laughs> whack. Whack, whack, whack. Whack, whack, whack. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn it down. That's for sure. No, it's not bad at all. Yeah. I almost wish like, I know we're not critiquing this drink. This is the original, but I almost kind of wish it had maybe like some orange juice in it too, or some guava. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think is missing? The passion like, fruit does kind of taste um, like guava esque. I I, it, I think it's missing. The, it's it's like tart guava. Um, I just want I just want a little bit more sugar in it. Honestly, yeah, yeah. I I, I mean, you know, I read you the recipe, but it felt it felt like it was lacking a little bit of sugar, so I even. Added a couple extra drops of the velvet falernum. Did you? Yeah. Um, 
I think it's I, th- I personally think it's balanced, but that's one of those things where it's just going to be subjective and it's definitely a boozy tiki reference. drink. It's like a boozy tiki drink. You think so? And, but really? I mean, it's syrup based, and, and there's only two spirits in it. But like, I wouldn't call it boozy. It tastes boozy. Do you really yeah. think? So? I know what you're saying. Yeah, it, it doesn't taste. It does not taste like a traditional. Like if I think of a tiki drink, it's more herbal to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, gin versus rum, maybe we'll make sure. it feel like Ab- it's... Sure, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's probably exactly what I'm going at here, yeah. but... Apparently, this is actually kind of a classic. It was invented in, like, 1967. Oh, wow. You're telling um, me you're, we are missing the, the garnish, though. Yeah, yeah, I was supposed to have a garnish of... I don't know how traditional this is, but it's on Imbibe website. Um, a lime twist wrapped around a cherry. I, I really do think the... In this case, the glass is the garnish. Oh, fuck though. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. more than enough. Yeah. <laughs> um Yeah. All okay. right. You want to get on Jameson's? Yeah. I think we yeah, should yeah, okay. it before Let's it gets too warm. So we, we put it down in normal people proportions. Um with all the respect yeah. to you. Yeah, yeah. No, you must I, have I, like I, fucking triple coupe glasses in your it, house. Unless he's drinking as a tiki drink. It's possible, but even then he said up in a coupe. I know, but like Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean like we, we put it to normal proportions and there's maybe a quarter ounce left of room in here. Right, yeah, because the recipe said that there was equal equal parts, one ounce each of I think it was lemon passion fruit syrup and uh ginger, ginger. syrup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then two two ounces of gin would make that a five ounce cocktail. Um so for the sake of us, you know, drinking three cocktails. Which means tonight, he has double coops. Double coops are, are six ounces normally. Is that what that is? That's yeah. true. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, and yeah. fuck it, man. Yeah. Then that's Yolo. fine. <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. Seriously. You might as well have a good time. See, Just like LC well, see, says. all his friends, yeah. friends are coming over. Yeah. You gotta impress him. Might He's as well. a big old magnum coop. Um so if you if you want a like a normal, you know, by the Alcoholics Anonymous guide standard drink, um, this is the recipe. So I, I made it with um Half ounce each of uh, um, sweat, fresh squeezed lemon that I strained, um, passion syrup, uh, passion fruit syrup, uh, ginger syrup. So a half ounce each of those, and then an ounce and a half of um, of gin. Um, use St. George's for that. Terroir. Terroir. Yeah. Terroir. And then um, I got two dashes of Peychaud's over the top by the, and it looked like blood smear in your name, but by the time I moved it to get a picture of it for you, it all smeared in. Mm. So, um, so, you did, so you did a slightly more gin. Then, then the actual ratio. If, like, if we were just to cut everything in half, I you suppose slightly yeah. more gin. I okay, I, I guess a okay. little bit more. Yeah, just curious. Sugar it, put it in a, in a chilled uh, coop for you. Um, let's give it a whack. And I, I over shook it so it did have some shards in it to represent those bones. And you strained it once, I believe, right? I, oh well, I stra- I strained the juices going into the, um, into the shaker, but I, I just strained it once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I can have any drink with Anthony's size of sips. That's definitely great. That's way more enjoyable than an actual Saturn, Jameson. Oh. That is the missing element. That the sweetness is the missing element. I don't know if it's the bitters on top that I'm that I'm drinking through. Um That's really good. Yeah. Um the ginger syrup is there. Yeah. It's it's admittedly not as hot as I want it to it be. It should it should be a little bit I I, I would try it, but yeah, I, I didn't could, have enough time. Yeah, Matt didn't buy enough ginger. So is what it comes down to. Um see this? But I um I, I could see I could see some more heat coming from that and, and this drink just it's the perfect amount of sweetness, I'll tell you. Oh that. yeah. If, um, if that ginger popped through just a little bit more. It actually does pop. It's just it does doesn't have the same It doesn't have the bite and the spice right. that ginger yeah. would have. It, ju- it is the is the essence of a bite, but it doesn't quite get its teeth in. Yeah. Yeah. Um this is a great drink, James Jameson. This is I like it. Yeah. It's really good. May I? Yeah, go for it. That's a I had two sips. Salute. I Rather like that. Seems like uh, lots of happy customers. So. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. All right. Um, what are we doing? Yeah, what are we going to do? What do we do to make this to better? fix that better? Troy, let's use whiskey. Yeah. Let's use rye whiskey. Um, maybe something a little herbal or floral. Um, maybe there's a couple of things we can do. We have um, that Widow Jane rye. We also have a um, batch two of the. 2020 Castle and Key Restoration Rye, which is um, very herbaceous, herbaceous and floral. Um, I think that would be great in this. What I haven't think? tried it, I've, so I don't okay. know. Okay, well, well, we'll do yeah. a little pour of it. Yeah. Um, I, first of all, I, th- I think we should do rye. What, what are you thinking? That's That was definitely what I thought. Yeah. I think, I, th- I think 
I think Rai, um, because it's it seems to be to me more conducive to a lighthearted sort of warmer weather kind of a cocktail. Like of course these these cocktails are, with the addition of some maybe some citrus. I really want to incorporate the orgeat and the velvet falernum back into the mix of things because of how much I love both of those ingredients. But I also I want to you know I want to keep some passion fruit and I I kind of want to, um, I mean. I don't know about you. If it works, I want I want to see if we could incorporate the absinthe rinse in there too. Um, you want to do an absinthe rinse, or do you want to do, you want to atomize? Ab- uh, well, yeah, either yeah. Way, either or either or. Just I, I would be I'd be I I think it would be great if if it had some anise over top of it. If we could if we could if we could rinse it with that or um, atomize it with absinthe, I think that'd be yeah. awesome. I, I almost am kind of wondering if we shouldn't use the velvet rollerum. Um, I don't know. I, I know you have a, a soft spot for it. But I just want to try it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? I guess we should start here. We should start by the process of eliminating what we didn't like first. Um, I think rye whiskey will do better because I think gin is a little bit too abrasive in a tiki cocktail. That's just me. Really? Okay. But yeah. And, I mean, not that rye whiskey is going to be any different, but if we use the right rye whiskey, we'll get all the good things from it, yeah. and it will hide. Um, rye whiskey is really good at doing that in a cocktail. Um, the other thing, um, the other two things, I think rye works really well with lime, and I and I also think that lime works really well with ginger, since we just did the ginger syrup too. If we can find a way to make those things happen too, I don't mean to. What if we used what if we used Irish whiskey? Um, what if we used, what if we used McConnell's or Green Spot? Be able to give you you said li- you said lime, and I just I just want to bring it up. Yeah, no, I know. I, I mean, personally, I I I, th- I want I want a whiskey that has that's going to stand out a little bit more than that. Okay, personally. Okay, yeah. yeah. This might fade a little bit. And there's a, there's a couple of other things um, that leads me to believe that I'm not sure if you ever guys had like a classic swizzle cocktail that typically has rum, like another tiki cocktail. Yeah, sure. But um, a, a seemingly. Um, I don't know if it's like an up and coming or if it's just, you know, a good alternative for, for a spirit substitute for the swizzle um, is rye whiskey. And I've never had one and I really want to try it. I'm a, we're going to Copper so. Spoon tomorrow night. I was going to ask them to make me whiskey Ooh. and tiki cocktails. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. I feel like rye, would, rye is just what I'm thinking. Um, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I think we're on the same page with whiskey. Um, we're incorporating pretty much still the ginger syrup, still the passion fruit syrup. Yeah. Um, we're doing lime instead of lemon, which I, I, I also think will add a different type of So, yeah, so cut. no lemon at all, just Yeah, I think, okay. it's, I think it's going to, I think it's going to cut a little bit different. Yeah. I, I which I, I, if, if the lemon's fine, um, I, I just think it could probably pop out just a little bit more. Uh, Jameson, your drink was extremely well balanced. We're not taking anything away from it. We're just going to make our own riff on it. And I th- uh, honestly, yeah, I don't that's really what he said to do. Yeah, yeah, I don't really think this is a, a loser, and I don't really think it needs the help of a doctor. I think I think yeah, you're thriving sure. and surviving, making drinks for your friends. But um, maybe we'll give you a little something to throw at them that might be a little different. You when know? they come over for the regular, like give me that. Like, hey, you know what? I yeah. watched an episode of The Cocktail Doctors and <laughs> try this one. <laughs> Let me hit you with this one. <laughs> Yeah, when you get your bougie whiskey friend over, that reminds you of Matt, just like some asshole who has all this whiskey but doesn't drink it, and then he tells you he <laughs> likes whiskey. Make that drink I for hate them. Whiskey. Yeah, yeah, I know you do. Um, what else are we doing, Troy? So uh, the velvet from Larinum, and then um, we doing shaking in a coop. Are we going to do over crushed ice? Or I think it's got to be served up. I I think so too. Yeah. Um, I think only up in a coop is the only way to drink cocktails. So maybe we should garnish this one with a, a lime. Oh, I was thinking of the, a lime yeah. cherry. If if we can, yeah, what make it make a. Long. What do you think about like a bar spoon of some sort of? Uh, I you hate this, but a bar spoon of some sort of little chair liqueur in there too. I almost wonder. It's, I think it's too much. I almost wonder if it would do well if we were using gin. Um, what with the cherry liqueur? Yeah, like just like just like a, a little pube hair. Yeah, of it. pube hair. Yeah, try that, James, and let us know what you think. If you got like Luxardo hanging around, put a bar spoon in the bottom of your shaker before you put the rest of your ingredients in there. And see and see if that kind of puts a shell on it. Um, one of my favorite little elevations to do. Um, cool. I'm excited. All right, let's kick it. Let's let's uh, let's, let's go. Fu- let's go fuck let's around and we'll, we'll bring we'll bring some stuff down and let's go fuck we'll around try and find some out. Drinks. Yeah. Okay. Fuck around and find out. Break, bitch. A fuck around and find out. Break. 
Yeah. All right. <laughs> Welcome back from cocktail break, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. That Welcome cocktail. Back. That cocktail break was brought to you by Laker. And Jameson, let me tell you. I told you before. The night is dark and it is filled with liquor. Um, we just had a grand old time riffing on your drink, man. Um, we think we came up with something pretty cool. For so, all people who can't see this. Yeah, it's we ended up doing a pretty nice garnish and stuff like that on it. We'll post a picture of it on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we tried a couple different rye whiskeys. We tried, um, I had a, um, a High West double rye store pick from a, a, a place in town called Belmont that I've made some, it's not necessarily great by itself, but it really, really kind of speaks in cocktails. So we tried that first. Um, didn't necessarily have the floral and herbal uh, essence. <laughs> ah, remember those commercials? Ah, yeah. <laughs> he's got the girl, it. Like, back in the two thousands, when sexualizing women was was, was like ridiculous. It was just they're in the fucking shower, coming while washing their hair. Anyway, <laughs> let's get this cocktail. Yeah, anyway, so um, it didn't have the, the herbal essence, um, so we moved on. We tried um, we tried the uh, the Castle and Key Restoration, right? We tried- um, Which was amazing, but not- the it, it's, it's really good. Um, really good. And I have, a, I have a bunch of batches of that, so I, I, had, I keep notes of whiskeys that I try that I think would stand out in cocktails for different reasons, and I, I had 2021 batch three on a list that I, I thought would speak out in a more fruitier cocktail. We tried that. Didn't work. Um, so we ended up going with uh, a Widow Jane rye that we had. And it's not the apple smoked rye or the, they make a, an apple wood rye. It's not that one. Um, I'll, 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 I'll uh, put the, the bottle in the episode notes and, and obviously the ratios and things like that. But um, we ended up using that. Um, we So we initially made it. And Troy, what was the initial um, proportions that we used? Well, the proportions didn't change from what we started out with, but it was one and a half rye, and then a quarter ounce of each um, velvet falernum, passion fruit syrup, ginger syrup, and orgeat, and then a half ounce of lime, um, and then we 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 atomized the glass with absinthe, and then finished with uh, Peychaud's bitters. Yeah, and so we tried that, and it was great. I I think I was the only one. In this party, but I thought, um, I thought it was a little too viscous, a little too thick. Uh, we had we had strained it into a, a chilled coupe glass uh, initially. Yeah, yeah I just not, thought the, I thought the lime didn't cut as much as I wanted to. Yeah. Right. So I um, forgot the garnish to be honest. So we argued about <laughs> too busy with everything else. It's yeah. all right. We argued about ice for a second. So we ended up putting these. My fridge makes these like smaller uh, sphere cubes, and. For you, Jameson, they kind of look like Death Stars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which kind of oh, which kind of worked out. So I put one of those in the center of the coop, and then we before we before we put the bitters on, and then I expressed a, um, a lime peel just because Matt made a great point that the lime, I, 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 an expression garnish, I think really kind of made the drink pop aromatically. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And so we we expressed lime over it, and then I made these little cute uh, lime garnishes and put it in the center of the Death Star, and then I dashed Peychauds on top of it. Um, the thing about my ice cubes in my freezer, I have a I have a refrigerator that makes whiskey spheres. They're smaller whiskey f- spheres. It only makes like three of them a day, but they're perfect spheres. They're, they're clear ice, but the bottom of them, there's like this little hollow point that kind of goes in. So it kind of reminds me of like the Death Star oh, yeah, after absolutely, it got fucking absolutely. Like, like, like yeah. So um, the one thing I said right before we came down here and after we made all three drinks is like, man, you know what? Maybe we should have like filled that kind of. The crevice, the crevice up with the pay shots, uh, but it could be like the bloody yeah, death star. It would be like the bloody something. death star, yeah. right? Um, but yes, yeah, so Matt actually named the drink too, and I think it's fucking great. Matt, what did you get? Moon of Endor. Moon of Endor. Yeah, or the Moon of Endor, if you want. Um, and Jameson, I'm going to tell you right now, your drink was great, but ours is fucking fantastic. <laughs> Salute, guys. Cheers. Give it, give it a try. Cheers. And cheers to you, Jameson. Appreciate your entry. Cheers. Cheers. Salute, Matt. Salute. It's juicy. It's a little bit, a little bit tangy. It's tart. It's viscous. I, and mm. the reason I wanted to add ice to it was because you know, 
obviously it was diluted after time. I would argue, and I did argue, that maybe pouring this in a rocks glass instead of a coupe over just normal, you know, freezer ice cubes or normal size ice cubes um, would work well too, especially on a poolside day as a tiki drink. I don't know. I really, I really feel like that would work. I think crushed ice and a tiki would also work on that. I think crushed ice would work too. I think crushed ice would almost kill it, though. I think crushed ice would be a little bit too much just because of how quickly it would dilute. Yeah, um, that is one big problem with it, though. It's too much of it. It's too drinkable. It, this is this is the um, <laughs> this is like one of the ultimate drinkers, and it and it looks fucking great. It that is a good looking drink, Mister Body. Yeah, the only the only thing that would enhance it is a spicier ginger syrup. Which we failed on, but yeah. that's fine. It's my fault. No, it's my fault. It's okay. Thank what you. A- <laughs> <laughs> that's what I meant. <laughs> here's the thing about hey, cocktails. Here's the, here's the thing about cocktails, and I'm going to do it right now. Um, there's a way to make this better. Yeah, Is it spicier ginger syrup or, and Troy's going to hate this, but Matt might love it. What if we took like a good spicy or organic ginger beer and floated a little bit on top? You could. It would be fucking fantastic. I, I think. think Troy I, hates it. He's shaking his head. I think that'd be a good idea. I do think the. I think the spicier syrup. I think would be what I would try first. I think it would be yeah. enough. But yeah. But I, instead, I, I instead of doing ice, yeah. yeah, I, I would. Troy I hates would, carbonation. I would really I, like. It's not. That's not true. It's just that. Um, I think it would take away from what we're going for here. I I really think that if it has it has a lime punch now, it's a kind of brighter note. If it if it drove it home on the lower end, yeah. with that with that spicy ginger, yeah. it it would hit you on the top, it hit you in the bottom, and kind of a nice yeah. viscosity. I think that would be next time I make ginger syrup. Yeah, we'll do it right. You better bet your hundred gallons sweet. of ginger. I fucking love ginger syrup. I kind of kind of kind of want to keep it at all times. I think. Yeah. Well, go to the store. It doesn't last long though. It doesn't really matter though, Troy, uh, Anthony, because as much as you buy, it's never going to be enough for Anthony, for Troy. So that's, he's that's always going to buy more. Troy, Troy does always <laughs> overbuy, but in this case, he was right. Yeah. Um, I, I will say that. Um, Never know. It's true. Jameson, I was also curious. You didn't mention this in your entry. Um, I was curious to see if you made your own ginger syrup and your own um, passion fruit I think you said he said it's a ratio. He, yeah, from... Uh, oh, did he list ratios and stuff like that? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you do make... Mm-hmm. Dude, respect to you, man. Appreciate that. That yeah. is the type... If you are um, an expiring... Uh, exp- not expiring. Hopefully no one's <laughs> expiring. If you are an aspiring home bartender, the first thing you can do to elevate your home bar <laughs> is to stop going to the fucking aisles in the store and buying simple syrup and lemon juice and lime juice and all these fucking pre shits. Just make it at home. It takes fucking 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Like, we literally made passion fruit syrup, ginger syrup. Um, I mean, Troy spent his whole lunch break making or jet. That's a little bit different, but like. Syrups are simple, guys. Like, that's why all, they call them simple syrups. Hey, we squeeze all the juice right before. You squeeze like, the juice, yeah. fresh juice, sugar, and you fucking let it cook for like five minutes, and you let it cool, and then it's done. And you're making cocktails in no time, dude. It is worth it. Uh, if you want to elevate your home bar, that is tip number one that we can give you here um, as your as your cocktail doctor. I don't know if your insurance will cover it, but. <laughs> Would you get <laughs> if you're sponsored by insurance? <laughs> <laughs> this cocktail break is brought to you by Allstate. <laughs> when you need a cocktail, get, get up insurance. the cocktail doctors. Allstate is not on your side. Yeah, yeah. All drinks? Oh, wait, no, no. Yet? Nationwide is on your side. I remember I got hit by a car a few years ago. Uh, story, no for, uh, story for a different day. I got hit by a car for a few days, and I, like, I showed up, and... Um, uh, Oh, yeah. And, and my lawyer was like, he's like, hey, first thing I'm going to tell you, typical like, you know, Fort Wayne, Indiana lawyer. First thing I'm going to tell you is like nationwide is not on your side. All state is not a good namers. Farmers don't give a fuck about you. Like, like literally how he started his like play to me. And also, like, I was literally at no fault in that lawsuit and uh, got no money. So fuck that guy. Anyway. What? Yeah. Uh, uh, we won't talk about that. Story right. for a different day. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh-huh. Um, okay. New challenge before we before we wrap this up. The person who drops their garners in the drink, this drink is garners. Troy already lost. I know Troy already lost. I was gonna get. I was gonna get there. Uh, buys the next rare bottle of whiskey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's funny. We got to slug it though, Matt. You ready? We got it. It's hard to slug with ice. That's only a problem. No, no, no. We can. Uh, you want me to show you? And I'll keep show the me. garnish in the glass. You ready? Come on. Slow slug. Your slug's in a fucking baby race right now. 
So some left. I wasn't slug. Let's see yours, bitch. Cheers. Oh, uh, looks like you're buying the next allocate of whiskey, dude. <laughs> I already, I already probably am. <laughs> that's not true. I'm going hunting all week next week. Well, damn. And the yeah. following weekend. God, that's gone. That is that gone. Really good. Out of the park. Fucking Mark McGuire steroid. Gone. <laughs> he took extra steroids In the today. fucking parking lot, dude. <laughs> Sammy Sosa shit. He used it's Mark Markwire used Sammy Sosa as a bat. <laughs> you know, if you can't tell, we tasted a bunch of liquor upstairs trying to make this for you. All right. Jameson. But well, anyway. g- great job to the doctors. Congratulations on a successful surgery. <laughs> <laughs> you analyzed and uh, uh, deciphered the cocktail and made it better. I think. Cool. Um, what do we got coming up? Not sure yet. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll um, definitely do a. Well, we still are doing a uh, stirred cocktail week. We are. Um, we we have a certain special guest. Uh, shaking cocktail. Shake week. it. Sorry. Doing a shaking cocktail week. We have a special guest in mind and um, plans didn't line up. She's on vacation, which she deserves. Um, she is a mother of two, so let that girl take vacation. Um, but we want to. Uh, that's coming up. I know we mentioned that that's going to be sooner rather than later. A couple episodes back. Stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. We got some stuff going on in the shop. Like I said, keep following, subscribing, sharing with your friends like you do with all your whiskey. Um, and we appreciate all your support. So uh, salute to you guys. And uh, Troy, lead us out. I think I need you guys. You need, need us? us? Can we hold hands while we do this one? No. Can we cheers while we do it? Maybe. There's no liquor left. Oh. All right. Well, three, two, one. Yodelay! Yodelay!